So I've been reading Rich Dad Poor Dad and he talks about how owning your own house is a liability and having investment property is an asset and it's one of the best asset classes. So I really started to think about it. Okay, so this was from Rich Dad Poor Dad, Robert Kiyosaki, I searched up his net worth, he's worth 80 million. And then I just sort of know, I have like this gut feeling that the rich of the rich, like the most successful people that aren't in real estate. Because if you look at the top five richest people like Bill Gates, Warren Buffett, um, Jeff Bezos, they don't do real estate and they're in the billions. Like most people that are worth over like 50 billion or over 30 billion, they're not in real estate. The people that are in real estate, they're just millionaires, multimillionaires, and they have a net worth of say 100 million by the age of 60. And that's definitely not what I want. I want more out of this life and I do want to hit those like high extremes. So I really start thinking it's like, okay, what are other assets, things I could put my money into? Because an asset is something that gives you money, a liability is something that takes money away. So what are different assets I can go ahead and invest into that will make me money? And I was like, huh. Maybe employees are assets. And then I was like, okay, that's sort of what Facebook and Google does. All they do is just hire more employees and more talent. Oh, Elon Musk and all these top entrepreneurs, they talk about the importance of having good talent and how it's very hard to find good talent. And they put in a lot of money into creating this whole Facebook world where they keep all the employees happy. That's what everyone's doing. The highest level asset is employees. And everything just sort of came together and I was like, light bulb moment, I was like, holy shit. I should just put all my money into employees and I'm gonna do the math with you guys right now. All right, so now I'm on Forbes. This is their real time billionaire list. And if you look at this list, none of these people are in real estate. Like they don't own a bunch of real estate. Whoa, Steve Barmer is pretty up there, that's crazy. All these people, they don't invest in real estate, like they don't have like a hundred, like for example, all the people like Grant Cardone, Rich Dad, Poor Dad, um, Donald Trump, they have like thousands and thousands of like real estate. That means they have like thousands and thousands of agents that they look out after thousands and thousands of physical products. Like that wasn't what I wanted. Like I don't see myself a real estate guy. That's not what I enjoy to invest. And this also got triggered when in the book Rich Dad Poor Dad, the rich dad says you want to invest into things you love because then you go ahead and take care of those things. And I don't love real estate. So employees are something that really, really clicked. So let's sort of do the numbers with you guys. Let's say you have 200 grand cash. Now let's see, Sydney average housing price. Whoa. That's a lot, uh, okay, let's, let's say that's real. Let's make it easier and just write 1 million. So house, 1 million. All you need to do is you need a 20% deposit, so it's perfect, the $200,000 cash can be a deposit. Let's make the text larger so you guys can see. Okay, next is Sydney average rent. So roughly it is weekly is 500. We'll, we'll bring it down to 500 to make it easy. Monthly rent equals $2,000. Dumb's yearly rent equals uh, 24,000. Perfect. Investment property. So this is option one. You put your 200 grand into a $1 million house and with that 200 grand you leverage debt so you're able to make $24,000 per year that gets reinvested into the mortgage that you just put into the mortgage so you sort of grow equity. Um, obviously a lot of this will be then paid into interest. Um, but yeah, you roughly get you know over 10% per annum on the amount you put down. 10% per annum return on investment. Now option two, is you have $200,000. Now, what's the average, Sydney average wage? Okay, so here's all the different numbers. Average around 75K, that's a bit too much. I don't think that's real. Maybe Sydney admin average, average salary. Okay, yeah, so it's roughly around 57. This is a lot. Let, let's do 50,000. 
because I reckon I could get like multiple employees at 50K for sure. Like I think 57 is a bit steep, but I think 50,000 for like a graduate or like someone that's like 25 because I do want to hire younger people. So at $50,000, I could then hire four employees. Now, that means if I want to make a better ROI on the investment property route, this is option one, all employees have to make over 24,000. So that means each employee has to make the company at least eight grand each, which is pretty crazy. This 200 grand that you put into investment property, that is post tax money. That's money that is no longer within the company. So you have to pay tax on this money, like you can't have the 200 grand be a company expense. So either you have 200 grand in cash, or you have, in Australia, the tax bracket is roughly 30%, or so you can have 30, 260,000 60, pre-tax uh, money in the company. So option two, you actually have more money because every time you hire an employee, that's a company expense. So you can write off $260,000 or or you could pay tax on the 260, then have 200K remaining to then invest into a property. So I forgot that. So you actually have five employees. Um, and then let's see, 260, 260, divide that by five. So $52,000 each. Yep, even more reasonable. Five employees and five employees have to make over that. Um, so that means $4,800 each. This is pretty crazy. But yeah, technically this is also incorrect because with the house, the 200 grand you put down, now you have 200 grand in equity that you can sort of take out when you need. Whereas the in this calculation, the we spent 260 or 200 grand in cash to only make that much. So let's recalculate this where um, equity equals the 200 grand that you put into the house given that the housing market stays the same price, plus the 24 grand you make, and this equals that. So that means we actually have to make this much to be profitable. So at this price, five employees have to make more than $224,000. That means each employee has to make at least $44,800 each. So that's sort of doable because every single company, when they pay an employee $52,000, they're getting at least a 2x ROI. Like, employee has to make the company money or else they can't be sustainable. And in this scenario, you can make a loss and it will still be better. You can make, like, for example, you can put in 52,000 and only have the employee return 44,000 or 45,000 into the company, make a loss, and it will still be equivalent of putting 200 grand into an investment property. So employees are actually a very good asset. Employees average return on investment. I think like 20% return on investment per employee is pretty, pretty reasonable. So let's do the maths. If we have a 20% ROI on employees, each employee brings in, brings in 52,000 times that by 1.2, which equals that much. So the total revenue, total revenue would equal this times five employees, which equal, whoa. So that means that's the amount. So the profit, would equal that much minus 260. Wow. So that means you spend spend 260,000 to make 52,000 which equals um, 52,000 divide that by 260 
Wow, equals ROI, huh? So it's, oh, and that's double the ROI you would get from investing in property. Pretty interesting, cool. Now, this is sort of in like, this is post tax. This is how much, but then you would also pay tax on the 24 grand you would net. I'm pretty sure the scenario sort of match. Like I know that this is pre-tax money and like the ROI would then be inflated, but like ROI, like even if this was post-tax money, the ROI would still be the same um, because both numbers would decrease at the same rate and it would still be 20%. And this 10% is very like realistic because like very optimistic because you don't take into account interest. You don't take into account um, fixing, house insurance. Uh, there's a bunch of liabilities, having the agent, the agent costs, the, uh, the time it takes to manage um, a property on top of your own business. Whereas if you're having extra employees, you're already in your business and it's not an extra, like you're not doing, you're not picking up a side hobby. Like real estate investment is basically a side investment. Whereas if you hire more employees, it goes straight into the company. So I, and I think 20% return per employee, that's also very light because if you're very efficient, you only hire to make an ROI and 20% is pretty low. So these are very pessimistic numbers and they still came up to 20 freaking percent, which is crazy. Um, and then the $52,000, that could be just re-put back into hiring the sixth employee and you can just keep scaling like this. And then all the employees, you would pay them and then that would be a company write-off. Like when you spend $52,000, that's a company expense and it's completely written off and the tax goes down to the people that are working for you. Like the tax is worse at the lowest level, which is the people, the, the workers, the nine to five workers. So proving the tax down to them, so therefore the company doesn't have to pay tax. Whereas if you do real estate, there's a bunch of capital gains, this and that. And with all those like things I mentioned, you only get a 10% ROI on your deposit. Whereas this option, you get a freaking 20 freaking percent ROI in the worst case scenario. So I think this is a huge eye opener. Like one, I need to learn how to crack. How can I really make sure that an employee makes $62,000 worth of output when I pay them 52,000. So that's number one, um, which is definitely doable because for example, repeated tasks that I do that I don't make money in a long term, for example, an email copywriter. Um, let's say I hire an email copywriter. I know that every email blast they send out, I get five bookings. Five bookings are worth to me. If each booking is worth say $50, that's $250 for one email sent out. I know the time it takes for them to write one email is probably two hours max. Let, let's say the average wage is $30. I'm paying them $60 to write an article for two hours. So I've paid a person $60 to generate me 250. That's a massive ROI. The difficulty is I need to know what to give them and come up with something that they can consistently do to consistently generate income. So I need to build the systems or I can hire someone else to build their systems for me and whole fly will affect. Like employees are like the highest asset level and there's a reason why Facebook, Tesla, Elon Musk, like the only thing that I care about is hiring. And hiring is actually a very important topic when you get into the multi-million dollar range and that's all companies think about, worry about and care about. So there's a position called HR. Their job is to find new people to give them jobs. That's how important hiring is when you build a company. You have a whole sector just for hiring people because they see that employees are a massive asset and they have a massive return on investment. And this is something that like people don't think about. Like I didn't know this. This is something I wasn't taught. And then even like this stuff, the the investing into property, this is the stuff that you're not taught in school. The average person isn't taught this, but the average entrepreneur may know this and then the average like CEO and like billionaire knows option two and I think that like like 
to in order for me to get that light bulb moment, I had to like read a bunch of things. I had to rewrite that for that. I needed to remember what Elon Musk was talking about in a podcast. I needed to really um, know about cash flow, return on investment, and it all came together and created this light bulb moment. And you guys get it all on a silver platter. And I know this might be confusing, but like. Yeah, this was an amazing breakthrough for me and I'm gonna start just reinvesting into just building my team and hiring and hiring and hiring and just put all my money into that because that is the highest level asset with the highest return and an employee is an investment because you'll have them for a long period of time. Let's say you invest into 10 employees, you're probably gonna retain like six of them and the ones you do retain, they'll grow over time, you'll train them and the wage scales but the knowledge and experience they get scales at a higher level. So your return on investment just keeps increasing over time. And that's sort of why Facebook creates such an amazing environment to really keep all these employees and keep people wanting there. And that's why all these people, companies like Deloitte and stuff, they create a name to attract people because they know how important and valuable people are. Crazy shit. Thank you so much for watching. If you guys enjoyed this video, let me know. Drop a comment below. Question of the day. What is your thoughts on this concept? Let me know. I want to hear your thoughts. Other than that, let's go ahead and announce last video's winners for $1,000 worth of courses or consultant calls with me. The winner is here. If you guys want to qualify, what to do is drop a comment below. Follow me on Instagram. Hit the subscribe button. Hit the notification bell. And I'll be picking the best comment every single video. Other than that, hope you guys enjoyed this video. Found value from it. Definitely something different. I had a lot of fun putting this together because I'm very shocked with the numbers and you know, it was a learning experience for us too and I was happy that I was able to bring you guys on the journey because this is the stuff I would have wished for from the entrepreneurs that I follow. But yeah, I'm still learning every day and you guys are getting every single thing I learned completely for free. So please hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, support the channel, that's all I ask for and I'll be seeing you guys tomorrow with more value. Peace.